Hey there, Nick Dutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how you can use a custom SSH key pair when interacting with a private Git repo. This could be really handy if, let's say, you have some contract work and you don't want to use your personal SSH key pair for that contract, or maybe you're in the process of recreating a new SSH key, maybe an ed 5519 one, and for a couple of repos that you have, maybe you want to use your old key, but you don't want to apply that old key to everything. So throughout this video, we're going to go over two different ways to do that. There is one way where you can set an environment variable when you run some git commands, and that's going to allow you to do that uh, right on the spot there without touching any config files. We're also going to go over how to configure a local git repo to use a custom SSH key so that you can just run your, you know, git pull commands or whatever. You don't need to define any environment variables. We're not going to be covering going over customizing an SSH config file because in my opinion for this use case here, where you just want to have a handful of repos using a different key, uh, that could be a little bit complicated using the SSH config file. Although that is a good way to do it for other use cases. Maybe I'll do future videos about that one in the past. And uh, by the way, this video, we are going to be doing a lot of things end to end here. I'm going to be making a private repo on GitHub, but it's exactly going to work on GitLab and Bitbucket as well. You know, the UI is going to be a little bit different, but all the stuff is just regular good old get you know there's nothing special really going on from the git provider that's going to be hosting things and by the way if you want to follow along all the commands that i'm going to be running and using here on video i'll leave a link to that one in the description you can have a written blog post about this one afterwards after i make the video here uh, it will be up though by the time you watch this one so anyways yeah let's start by creating an initial git repo, git repo here you know in the temp directory uh, i just initialized a new repo here initial commit etc etc if i do a git show we can see we are good to go uh, I'm also going to generate a couple of different SSH key pairs so we can demonstrate what it's like to use a custom key and, you know, maybe also see what it's like when you use a key that doesn't, uh, that's not allowed. So uh, we can do that by running SSH key gen here. I'm going to make the type here, ed5519. We are going to create that key in the temp directory. Definitely don't want to overwrite my existing key there. And uh, yeah, this is a nice way to run a one-liner without being prompt for any input here. Uh, but let's also make a second key, which is going to be basically a disallowed key. You know, this key won't be allowed to, let's say, pull from somewhere uh, because this key won't be available for that private repo here. But uh, yeah, so that's going to give us two different keys, the allowed key and the disallowed key. The next step will be creating the private Git repo on Bitbucket or GitHub. I don't know why I keep saying that because I have some clients that are using Bitbucket. It's always the top in mind. But uh, yeah, in this case, I'm just going to make a private repo. The private part's really important here. Well, not super important, but a good idea is for testing because I will be destroying this repo afterwards. You know, it's not going to be around in my profile somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to set up any initial stuff here, but let's create the repo here. Very good. And then uh, since we already have the repo initialized, sure, let's change the, the branch over to main here. Depending on when you're watching this video, if it's in the future, maybe this will be the default behavior. Depending on what version of uh, Git that you have, it will create the main branch instead of master. Then we can go ahead and add the remote here. You know, steps are going to be slightly different for you, but it's generally copy pasting here, you know, based on your account here. And then lastly, sure, let's go ahead and just push this thing up here. Uh, done. Just to give us something up. Oh, do I know how to copy paste? Copy paste. There we go. I am a programmer. There we go, though. You know, if I go back to here, reload this page here, we should see that uh, the initial commit here, you know, just a little sample demo file with basically nothing in there. Done. So we have our get repo set up. Perfect. Now, you know, I can run a get pull here, and this is just going to work automatically. You know, we're not getting access denied. And that is because just due to the way that, uh, bug, my God, GitHub works. So if you go to your settings here in GitHub, and then you go to SSH over here. You know, I've already got an SSH key here from, geez, almost 10 years ago, right? Nine years ago, roughly. Uh, almost to the day, honestly. Today's February 4th, I'm recording the video. Anyways, yeah, this key is already set up. This is on my dev box. This is the key being used by default. So I can interact with any private repo that I have without having to use something custom. But uh, yeah, let's say now that we want to actually do something custom. And uh, this is where the fun begins. So let's go over the environment variable method first because we don't need to worry about setting different configs big options and things like that. This could be reasonably useful if you just want to have a one-off somewhere where you just want to use, uh, you know, maybe just one command or something where you don't want to set a config file. Uh, but of course, you know, it's one of those funny things where, uh, you know, your shell history is very important because it's kind of a long command here. And uh, actually I named this key allowed, not custom. So minor difference there from my notes, whatever. But this git ssh command is an environment variable provided by the git command line tool here. And the idea is we can just customize some SSH flags here, hence the name get SSH command. So the first thing here, we just want to say that, hey, by the way, you know, I want to use this custom uh, allowed key that we have here, not the default one. So that's what the I flag here. It's your identity. This is the private key, by the way. Notice there's no dot pub there at the end. 
And then for the dash O flag, well, technically, if you don't have an SSH agent or SSH key agent running, then you don't need to set this flag. But if you do have one running, then it's very important to set this one because, you know, this will instruct your agent not to try to use any of the keys that it's already loaded in the agent, but instead it's going to use the one from this flag. So, you know, it doesn't really hurt to set both flags. That's why I set both here. Is this going to work for more folks out of the box? You know, also, you know, in my case, I'm not running an agent, so technically I didn't need this flag, but I will still add it anyways. And then after that, you know, once this environment variable is set, you can just start running whatever commands that you want to run. Uh, you don't need to do anything extra here. And, uh, you know, this is not going to work. Why? And this is totally expected. You know, we don't have this key available to use in that private repo. So we're getting access denied. And also, you know, if I go here and change this to be, uh, what did I name this one, like disallowed, then, you know, this one's going to fail as well. Totally expected. And by the way, you know, you could totally export this, uh, you know, environment variable here. So you don't need to literally put it in to every command. But let's not do that just yet here. But we can see, okay, the first step is we actually need to put our public aspect of this allowed key here in that private repo that we just created. So that's not too bad. We can just cut out, let's say this temp allowed file here. Uh, we want to cut out the public key. Very important that we don't uh, cut out the private key. Although I will be deleting this keys after it wouldn't be the end of the world if it made it way if it made its way on video. But yeah, this is uh, the public key for this one. Cool. And got the host name here and my user straight from my prompt. That's uh, in case you're wondering there, you know, this should be the host name, I suppose. Well, you know, the username as well. But anyways, okay, so I copy this, right? This is now copied to the clipboard. Then we go over to the settings of the private repo. And this is, of course, going to be a little bit different if you're using GitLab or Bitbucket. But in uh, GitHub's case, you can just go to deploy keys here. And uh, let's add one. Cool. And I'm just going to add like a test one here, pop that in. Uh, I'm going to give myself right access in case we just want to play with maybe pushing up changes to the private repo. Uh, but yeah, we can just add that key here. And now we have this key available for the allowed key. So now if I go back to here and we rerun the disallowed one, this should still still fail because we didn't add that one. But if we run the allowed one, this should allow us to pull from this repo. Awesome. Cool. We're done. Well, basically done with the option of using environment variable here. But uh, yeah, let's just make sure that we can actually push as well. And clone is going to work, you know, any commands that you want here. So I don't know, let's echo dot 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 like hello to a new file here. And we'll just get add A and then, I don't know, get commit this thing with a good dot, dot, dot is that. And then we can uh, do a get push here, right? Origin on the main branch. And there we go. We were able to successfully use our deploy key with write access. Everything is nice. So let's move on to the next one, uh, which is going to be Probably the option of choice if you plan to have a repo stick around and you're going to be running commands maybe today, maybe three days from now or something like that. And that is using a, a git config option that's available. I think it's been available since 2016, like whatever version of git, I forgot the exact number, 2.10 or something like that. Uh, you can check what version you have, but chances are, you know, if we're talking from, uh, you know, seven, whatever years ago, uh, you're probably good to go here. But uh, yeah, the command is actually very, 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 very similar to the environment variable command. And that is going to be this command that we see here. Let me just change this to be the allowed key or just allowed in this case. Uh, but the flags are exactly the same here as the environment variable. But here we could say, you know, get config core dot SSH command. And then we hit enter there. And uh, that didn't produce any output, but things promised, uh, or I promise you things did actually work here. So if we open up uh, what's in here and we go to that config folder or config file, I should say, when we ran get config, then that actually added this config item over here. And we can see, you know, we didn't have to do any funny business here. Like this is just normal, regular get stuff. Um, but yeah, this is the, the command here that's set for us. So the great thing now is that, you know, from our point of view, we no longer need to set that environment variable. You know, this repo is already set up to go to use this custom key here. Everything is great. Like, uh, and, and I promise you, it's really actually using that key. And very nice. And by the way, in case you're just curious, you can actually override that with this. So if we go back to that disallowed key here, you know, this should fail here because uh, the environment variable is going to overwrite the config option that we set. And keep in mind, you know, that config option that we ran here, you know, get config, this is not what the global flag. So this config item that we just ran here is only localized to this one specific Git repo here that we have in this directory. It's not going to affect anywhere else. So that is actually really nice. It's kind of funny. Like it's one of those things where I've been using Git forever, but I actually very rarely do I use local Git config options, but this is one that I find to be pretty, pretty handy. 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the setup here. You know, now we have two different ways, you know, if you're just doing a one-off, maybe you set the environment variable. If not, the get config option is all good to go here. And uh, yeah, so let me know in the comments below, like what's your preference for doing this type of thing? I mean, for me, I'm using the get config option here because the, the repo is long lived. So it makes sense. You know, I don't want to have to export this or, you know, keep putting this at the start of every command. But yeah, with that said, uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.